I don't know if you've noticed, but enclosed pistol red dots are becoming a thing. Okay, maybe they already were, but now even the poorest like us can enjoy them. I'm referring to the newest affordable options from Hollow Sun and Swamp Fox, the EPS and the Kraken. That must be the aim point, bros. Look, I can't afford a $600 two inch mini fridge in this economy, though I've been repeatedly assured it's just transitory. So which of these budget mini fridges is right for you? Well, before we get into that, why would you even want a closed emitter pistol red dot? Well, having a sealed housing means less likelihood that debris will block the emitter or get on the inside of the front lens, which is more of a pain to keep clean. I don't typically shoot in the rain or fully submerged, nor do I voluntarily throw my handguns into piles of debris, but dirt, dust, and fingerprints can plague even the most meticulous gun owner with normal use, especially EDC. So there's that. Now I realize there are other options in this category, such as the Steiner MPS or the Romeo 2, just to name a few, but the EPS and the Kraken both can be had right at or below 400 bucks, and I think that's a better affordable comparison. If I can get my hands on those others, maybe I'll compare them in a larger field. We'll see. Thanks to True Shot Gun Club for providing ammo for this video. I mainly used Ammo Incorporated 115 grade 9 millimeter, and it ran great. Also thanks to Hollow Sun and Swamp Fox for providing the dots for this video with no obligation of outcome. The Mag Shack has the mags you need at a solid price all the time. From Smith & Wesson to SIG to Glock to Taurus, from ARs to AKs, they've got it. If you don't believe me, go check the link in the video description to head over to themagshack.com and check out the massive selection they have. The Kraken is Swamp Fox's newest offering, and it's their first foray into a fully enclosed pistol red dot. It has a long bread loafish design, a 16 by 16 millimeter viewing window with a three MOA dot. It's got oversized brightness controls and a side mounted battery door. The watertight housing features what they call a double barrel design. So I guess it's approved for the Biden household. Come on, man. Now this means that there's an inner and an outer aluminum housing, 7075 aluminum, and it feels like it could withstand a lot of abuse. According to Swamp Fox, it's shockproof up to 1,500 Gs. For reference, the highest G-forces survived in a motorsport incident was from an IndyCar crash in 2003 where the driver was subjected to only 214 Gs. Swamp Fox set one on fire in their promotional video and apparently it was fine. If that's a game changer for you, I'd love to know what your range dates look like. I would say it draws from the Aimpoint Acro school of thought, and it's more than just a passing resemblance. Now, I'm not accusing Swamp Fox of copying someone else's homework, I'm just pointing out what anyone will notice if they're familiar with both. It's not like Aimpoint has a patent on simplicity, raw durability, and designs that resemble a car wash. The plates included fit the RMR and Glock MOS footprint with all the hardware and tools you'll need to mount it. Lastly, it runs on an included CR2032 battery with shake to wake and an estimated two year real world battery life. The EPS from Holosun is their latest offering as well, depending on when you watch this, and it's essentially a 10% smaller 509 with a native RMR footprint for a lower profile and better co-witness with sights. It's launching alongside an even slimmer EPS carry variant and both forego the intermediate plate system of the 509. This means they also sit lower than the Kraken, which also uses an intermediate plate system, and Holosun says it's the lowest deck height in their lineup yet. The EPS has a tray style battery door, adequate size control, and a backup solar panel. Additionally, this is the MRS, or multiple reticle system version, so it can toggle between a two MOA dot, a 32 MOA circle, or a combination of the two. Construction is 7075 aluminum, like the Swamp Fox. It's waterproof, but they rate it at 5,000 Gs of vibration. I wish the industry would pick one metric that we can agree on. Uh, yes, the EPS can survive 50 hours on setting five in a Ninja Blender, but the Kraken can survive 6,000 eel farts per square inch. I'm just gonna say based on holding them that the Kraken feels stronger than the EPS, and feelings are basically treated as fact these days, so that's my truth. The EPS has a much shorter housing and roughly half that of the Kraken, but with a 16 by 23 millimeter window, seven millimeters wider. Now, a surprise for me was the battery, which is a CR1620, rather than the common CR1632 that's in most of their other pistol optics. My first time out to the range, I realized it had been running on solar panel back at my house, which is gonna run but not charge the battery, and of course it was a gloomy day outside and it wouldn't run at all. And I didn't have any 1620s, just a ton of 1632s. This must have been done for packaging reasons because despite having the same diameter and much less capacity, a CR1620 is significantly thinner than a CR1632, contributing to that low overall deck height. The battery is rated for 50,000 hours with auto on. I can't imagine what it went through before it got to me to be totally dead. Lastly, it includes all the tools and hardware necessary to mount, 
so that's good. Host guns were the Faxon FX-19 Hellfire for the Kraken and the Canik TP-9 Elite Combat for the EPS. Both guns are pretty sweet with flared magwells, excellent triggers, and good ergos, making them excellent range toys to test these optics with. Side note, I also tested out the Calculated Kinetics Aluminum Dog Tag Plate for the Canik, which replaces the polymer plate and adds a shield that protects the lens from spent casing while also providing a ledge that you can rack the slide on instead of the face of the optic. It's pretty cool, and it also leaves room for the chamber indicator. Both optics performed great at the range. They have excellent brightness, and they were rock solid with their provided hardware. The EPS was a little easier to acquire at first with its shorter and wider housing, the longer crack and taking just a little bit more getting used to, but after 50 rounds or so, I was equally proficient with both. I could personally do without the multiple reticle system on a smaller optic like the EPS. The outer 32 MOA circle started to obscure targets when I was more than 30 yards out, at least for me. It's a $70 premium over the standalone 2 MOA dot version, but if they offer an ACSS Vulcan reticle at a later date, I'd be all over that. I've reviewed the 507C ACSS Vulcan on my channel, 12 Spies, and it's one of my favorite optics, and honestly, it's a game changer because of the reticle. Check that video out if you want to learn more. If you're looking for a compact carbine optic, for me, the Kraken makes more sense because of its beefier design and larger controls, especially as an offset secondary, but if you had to have a hollow sun, I think the 509 makes more sense than the EPS. I'd want the bigger window, personally. Concealed carry notes. Neither were uncomfortable, nor did they feel noticeably different to the open optic that I carry, which is a 507C. The Kraken did print more because of the large battery door, so keep that in mind, especially if you're a lefty, because that'll be up against your stomach. It wasn't a deal breaker for me based on my wardrobe. Unsurprisingly, it's also a heavier optic than the EPS, 2.5 ounces versus 1.4. I would say if you carry a micro pistol, the Kraken will look and feel enormous. But if you carry something like a Glock 19 or larger, especially with a light, it's gonna feel right at home. I also believe that the Kraken would make a better hammer if you ran out of bullets. But would that statistically count as gun violence? How dare you? Lastly, let's talk cost. The EPS, MRS, MISSI PPI is quite a bit more expensive than the Kraken. Street prices as of this video were $400 for the red, or 430 for the green, which disqualifies it. Whereas the Kraken can be had for just under 300 bucks for the red or green variant. Now, the regular red dot EPS is listed at 329, and then that's a much more fair fight with only a 10% cost difference. Now, Holosun offers a limited lifetime warranty that must be registered and is voided by aftermarket finishes, normal wear and tear, acts of nature, saying the word cloister too many times. So it's basically just for inherent defects from the factory and it's non-transferable. The Swamp Fox seems much more broad. For example, they allow aftermarket finishes with coverage up to 50,000 rounds with very little restriction, and it's transferable. Now I realize what's written on a sheet of paper or on a website might vary from the actual amount of grace extended by a manufacturer. I personally haven't interacted with either warranty department, so let me know in the comments below if you have and how that went. In conclusion, I think they're both great options and they add a lot of value to the segment. The EPS is more compact, it sits lower on the handgun, and it's easier to acquire at first though I've never found the solar backup necessary or useful when they have such a long battery life. And as I stated before, I don't think the multiple reticle system is beneficial on this small of a window. Now, if it was the ACSS Vulcan reticle I talked about earlier, that'd be a different story. The Kraken feels like the brawnier, more battle-ready optic if that's what you're going for. I love the huge controls, the window provides a perfectly adequate view, and it's cheaper with a better warranty. <laughs> Come on, man! And not that it matters, I think it looks more badass. So which would you pick? and why. Tell me in the comments below. And remember that gun control is just an avenue to greater tyrannical control. 